If you've ever dreamed about starting your own business in the fashion industry or specifically having your own fashion line, then today's show is for you. Today's guest, Sanji Williams, is a fashion designer, business owner, and two-time Project Runway finalist. She's here to talk about life after the show, building a fashion brand, and how she's leaving the world with a little something by Sanji. All right, guys, welcome back to The Creators Club. This is where we find out what drives artists and creative professionals just like you. I am sitting here today with fashion designer Sanji Williams. Yes. What's up? What's up? Welcome to the clubhouse. I think that's what I want to call this. Um, to okay. me, a clubhouse kind of represents a safe haven. Yeah, where, I like that. You know idea. what I mean? Like, you, I created this myself, mm-hmm. and, you know, that's kind of like your your safe your safety zone where we yeah. can op- talk freely, be open, and just kind of feel good about what's going on. So, okay. I think we're going to call it the clubhouse. All right, let's just jump right into it. So, some of the people out there watching may know you from a little show called Project Runway. This little baby. You were on show. two seasons. I did. Which um, ones? Let's talk so about I did that. Season ten of Project Runway, um, and I think I was like the fourth runner-up. And then I went back again uh, <laughs> after the craziness. I went back and did All Stars, uh-huh. uh, Project Runway All Stars season four, mm-hmm. and I was the runner-up on that season. Nice. So I saw when you said I went back again. You had like a little bit of a, uh, a, a yeah. gesture there. I want to know what 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 did that stem from just now? What were I you think thinking? it's a very it's it's easily the hardest thing I've ever done. So for me, it was like, do I really want to go back and do that again and mm-hmm. experience all everything that comes with? It's so it's more of an emotional thing than anything. Uh, See, a lot of people that watch reality TV don't really know what goes into reality TV and mm-hmm. what it's really like being on those shows. So do you want to, can you share just a little bit of like yeah, what um, that experience is like? What was the hard parts about it? I mean, everything is hard about it from not having really any contact with any of your friends or family. Mm-hmm. You also don't, you don't, it's such a disconnect from the outside world. So oh, you don't, okay. you don't have any computers, no magazines, no newspapers you don't even know what's even happening know in the world wow. <laughs> um so you why is that because they want to make sure you don't um, leak information well, maybe i think it's just it's, it's because when you're by the time depending on when they film and when they air the less you are in touch with what's happening in the real life the less like you are to bring it up and be like oh my gosh did you see the uh, and then I by see. that time things like that oh are relevant. that makes sense also it's like um that makes sense they also want to keep your inspiration and, it, and that's what kind of was a, probably one of the best things I got out of it is that, because um, you can like, you know, look at a magazine, like, oh, I'm just going to steal this outfit. Oh, and make this I outfit. see. They want to keep you focused so, on the show. Okay. And um, I think before then I was like, there would be days and I'm just like, oh, I'm not feeling it. I'm not going to make anything. Um, but when, you, when someone's like, all right, you have 30 minutes to sketch. You have 30 minutes to buy your fabric. Mm-hmm. You don't, you have to find a part of your brain right. and reach into a memory or a thought or idea or inspiration, something mm-hmm. to drive you to make this one particular piece. Yeah. And I think that's probably one of the biggest lessons I learned was to always find inspiration anywhere, everywhere. So that segues into my next into my next question. It's perfect. So I feel like as an artist or anyone that's creative, it's like in order for you to, to create and put things out into the world, you have to be inspired. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the things that inspires you to come up with your designs and things that you want to put out when you do your collections every season? Um, fabric's very inspirational to me. Like, I don't really sketch. It's not really how I have my design process, I guess. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times I'll find, I'll just go fabric shopping. And I could just be there for a few hours, just feeling, touching, looking findings a, a, maybe it's a color maybe it's a pattern or something that kind of speaks to me and some a lot of times that particular piece will come to me just solely based off of you know the fabric itself okay. I'm like this this is a pant is is calling my name in mm-hmm. this fabric and then um and yeah so and then I always it's like it's kind of a whole process in the way that I I, I think about like my woman is very She's comfortable. Mm. She's confident and she's comfortable. And like I think those are two things I never want to compromise. I don't think you have to like be uncomfortable. When you when you're comfortable, you feel right, good. Right, right, right. So you look good. Mm-hmm. So I think um, that's my woman. My woman's me. So I think because of that, I always make sure that I, I include that in in my aesthetic. Um, cool. So you said that you don't sketch. Do yeah. you find that the fact that you don't sketch is that? Do you find that it in any way it's detrimental to your, your creative process? Is it that do you not sketch because you just don't want to? Or do you feel like I just make and that's what works for me? Um, I find 
sketching to be detrimental. Oh, okay. Talk about <laughs> I that. I think that, you know, some people, and, and I don't want to say I never ever sketch, but for the most part, I find that when I sketch, I feel more inclined to stick to that exact idea and say, I have to make this, this was the idea, I have to stick to that. Mm. Where when I don't sketch, I can kind of let my mind kind of lead me into whatever direction the piece is calling. Nice. So I do more, I do more like, um, I do draping a lot. So I'll just put, depends on what I'm making. Sometimes I'll say I want to make a dress and I'll kind of have a, some kind of an idea of a silhouette in mind and I drape the fabric on the dress form and kind of let it, kind of become its own thing. Uh, I as see. As oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's nice. So I know, um, so I want to understand your creative process, that's why I'm asking. Mm -hmm. um, so I know like for me, like as a, when I do choreography, right, usually it's like I don't do choreography a lot. I really only do it when I'm really inspired by a mm -hmm. song and how that happens is I'll, I'll hear a song and I just start seeing, I start seeing the music video or I start mm -hmm. seeing the stage performance in my head mm -hmm. or if I see a product that I really, really like or a brand, I start seeing the commercial for mm -hmm. it or what the print ad is. So that's kind of like how I get my process. Um, I do do mood boards, which in, I guess in my field is kind of similar to what sketching is for mm -hmm. you. So I guess what you're saying is you go to the fabric store. When you see that piece of fabric that you like, is that how it works? Is it like I, you, you start seeing the seeing item or the that. garment already? Exactly. When you see or, that. Oh, okay. Or kind of the, this is kind of the basis of the collection. And then I'll start, I do swatching a lot. So I'll get a, get a cut, couple of swatches, little pieces of fabric. For those who don't know what's what, <laughs> just get a little piece of the fabric, and then I start putting the fabrics together, and finding a story within the fabrics that makes sense for that season, or what the story that I'm trying to tell, um, and yeah, and then it just kind of finds its way to each other. At one point, I think um, it was kind of hard trying to find that balance, or it was a little overwhelming thinking that I'm selling clothes to women that are all different shapes, sizes, mm -hmm. colors. Um, and I think and that's uh, a lot of people to yeah. account for. People don't realize how much pressure yeah, that is. And I think yeah. I think I was playing it safe when I very when I first started off because I think that I was trying to appease everyone oh, okay. and saying, "Hey, if I do this, this is something that almost everyone would like." And um, a few seasons later, now it's funny because I feel like a lot of the pieces that do really well are ones that I'm like, I made because I wouldn't say for fun, but I had this notion that. I'll have pieces that I think most people will buy, but I still have to have those like special passion projects. Okay, or like okay. Piece, pieces that I feel great about that. I don't know if people are going to love, but I think that I, I, I can't have things that are so simple that or else I'm, I'm right. going to make what sets me apart. Right, from so that's what I was going to say. And I think that's probably why those pieces do so well is because now everyone wants to feel like they have something everybody else doesn't have. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So into my next question, do you feel like um, it's good or bad to uh, have a specific audience. You know what I mean? To make more sense of that, because you mentioned earlier how in the beginning you were trying to appease everyone and make something that everybody would like. Do you feel like today it's important to do that? Or do you feel like it's probably a little bit better, especially for somebody that does what you do and mm -hmm. makes clothes, that you kind of need to identify who, who's your we girl? Are, You're like yeah. The more I create, the more... You know, I got this uh, feedback from... Like, she was like a friend of a friend, and she told my best friend that, you know, like, looking at my line now, she's, she kind of has seen my progression, and she's like, every piece she makes now really just feels like her. And I was mm. like, one of the biggest compliments I've ever received, because I think when I first started designing, I hated the idea of being in a box. Mm -hmm. it's like, I can make everything. I can make evening wear and swimwear uh. and women's wear and, like, all, everything. And it's just like, if... <laughs> you make everything then like what's your identity right you, right how would anybody know this is, is sanji yours yeah. if you just make everything mm -hmm. and um i think me doing project on the all stars really kind of helped it was weird it was like doing through every every challenge i found myself like actually found myself i found my voice my aesthetic as a designer through the show as I was doing it and I did a really great job. Like yeah, I wasn't even the bottom once <laughs> throughout the season and it wasn't because I, when I did it the first time, I was like, I was so worried that there were times that I want a challenge and I thought I was going home because oh, I was okay. so just like, oh my God, are they mm -hmm, gonna like it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then 
I promised myself if I came back, I would only make clothes that I feel great about so that yeah. if I do get eliminated, it's something for something that I'm like, oh, well, I, I loved it. So I'm gl- I'm sorry you didn't like it. And I'll, I'm always taking their critiques very seriously because even when I was, even though I've never been in the bottom, I listen to the critiques from the people in the bottom because it's always something I can learn from. Right. But I still want to make sure that it's clothes that I believe in because the worst thing is to go home for something that you were trying to impress, impress other people, other people for yeah. they and they and still I think don't like it. a good lesson for all artists is just to make sure that whatever you're putting into the world you got to stand by that you created it for a reason you had the idea you had the vision for a reason always stand by your work don't ever Absolutely. completely compromise or jeopardize your work trying to appeal to the masses yes um you know we do know that there's a thing called commercialization which is you know making something that appeals to the masses and can be um you know, distributed in mass productions, and you always do got to have those pieces in your collection, like you mentioned earlier, but it's always good to still have those passion projects and those fun things that you were like, you know what, this is something that I was feeling, and I'm going to stand by this. I don't care if nobody buys it. I love it. You know what I mean? Something that's a good good lesson. And to get back, like, to get back on topic, because of that, I find more and more that, you know, I have to kind of have more of those pieces that, are different or sets me apart because otherwise like we're in the age now where a fast fashion where mm-hmm. everyone's buying their clothes from Zara and H&M mm-hmm. and Topshop where it's all affordable clothing and it's nice clothing too I'm not even a hater right, like, right, right, right. I'm, I'm on Zara sometime like damn that skirt looks great <laughs> so I can't I can't even be mad at it so why there has to be something that sets me apart from Zara or else you just shop at Zara. At Zara. Mm-hmm. It's cheaper. It's nice clothes. Why Why not? Mm-hmm. Um, besides, you know, some people really do enjoy buying from smaller brands, supporting right. small businesses, and wearing something that they know nobody else is going to have. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has, to, it has to feel different. It has to feel special. And so that's, that's where I'm at now is making clothes that I feel very passionate about. And the people who like it, it will catch on. I yeah. think it was hard yeah. for me at first because I felt like, it's the sense of doubt, like, am I good? Am I? Yeah. Why yeah. are people buying this? Goes is this not that. good? Like, yeah. <laughs> no, my shit's the bomb. I know my like, I'm I'm at the point now where I'm very confident in who I am as a designer, and I know that I have a voice that yeah. sets me apart from everybody else, and and I think because of that, I I kind of have a good alliance alliance with other designers that yeah. I'm like. You know, when I have information, I'll share it with them and vice versa because I don't feel like I'm in competition with you. Right, right. You know, we can all help each other. It doesn't yeah. have to be a... Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, so the brand is called Something by Sanji. Yes. How'd you come up with that name? Um, <laughs> well, this is the third name of my brand. Um, <laughs> Let's, well, we're all uh, them. I don't know. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> um, the first, my first line, I called it Skin by Sanji, which I realized that... that it was something. It was another name that was by Sanji. Um, and I don't know. I changed it because it sounded like porn or something. Skin. I feel like skin sounds like beauty cosmetics. Like it was like a like it's a like a oh, product. Oh, I never thought of that. But you know, I changed it because also. Well, the reason why I came up with the name was because I wanted people to feel comfortable in it, like it was like their own skin. Ah, uh, I like that. Um, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I changed that, and then. Uh, and then my line was called Hot and Low, which was like, you know, hot is like uh, H-A-U-T-E, which is like high fashion and low. So it's kind of like the idea of kind of mixing and matching. And so um, it's always been the same concept now that I think of it. Like my slogan is dress it up or dress it down. Right. And, mm-hmm. um, I've always wanted to make clothes that I don't like occasional clothes that you can buy once and, you know, you wear no. once and then that's it. Like I want... I want to wear everyday clothes and I want people to want to wear my clothes every right, day. I right. don't want you to go to one thing and then you put it in, in your the closet, closet and never wear it again. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I hate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think about clothes that you can, you know, this dress I've worn with just like sneakers and that's it. And then, or, you know, like today I have on high heels with it and I'm like a little more. Yes, yes. So you're wearing something yeah. by Sanji? I'm always wearing something <laughs> yeah. by Sanji. You are. Every time yeah. I see you, you are always something by Sanji. I think, um, I don't, I don't feel the, it's weird. I used to kind of feel a little more of the pressure to wear my, my clothes now. And now I don't feel the pressure. I just find myself that I Prefer like my that. clothes. Like yeah, why would I, fine. and I think it's like, it, it does, I think it's a true testament. Cause like 
there's so many designers I see that n- almost never wear their own clothes. Right. I'm like, how do you stand by something that you don't, don't even, even wear? wear? Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, that's me. a big issue in just any type of consumer goods industry mm-hmm. where it's like a lot of people do make stuff that they wouldn't that they wouldn't wear or give to their children or feed their children. That's a big issue. But I think it's a, it's it's largely a part of kind of brands that are celebrity based brands that kind of I'm just selling something because I'm a name uh-huh. and people will buy it because of my name versus something that they're actually passionate about like a, a brand like honest from like jessica alba mm-hmm. you can tell that yeah. something she's actually passionate about right versus like i mean i don't know i could go into a million brands yeah, that yeah. Of, of of people that it seems like they're just putting their, their name on something or they're the ambassador of a right brand or so a, what's interesting about what you about what you just said is that i actually read an article in um fast company magazine that's mm-hmm. one of my favorite magazines um it's a really great business resource to learn more about creative creative professionals people in uh, entertainment industry as well as in technology um, and it just kind of gives you a lot of insight on like what they're doing on a day-to-day how they're successful how they're coming with their ideas etc and it actually teaches me a lot um, but one of the articles that I read in there there was 10 things we can all learn from Beyonce and I forget which number it was but one of those things was um, now I don't know if this is a fact but this is what was in the magazine um, was that it said um, she avoids slap your name on it partnerships. Mm-hmm. So one of the re- one of the recent um, ventures that she launched was the partnership with Topshop where she did Ivy Park. Mm-hmm. And um, it just talked a lot about like her process with doing research and development, making sure that she was really involved with the design team, how long it took her to actually uh, pick those designers mm-hmm. that were right for that athletic wear. And then I just, I love the whole mission of Ivy Park. Um, so I, I love that she's mentioned that. I think a lot of people that try to move into fashion Recently, a lot of people are doing like merchandising, uh, like T-shirts. They'll like slap their logo on something and they'll yeah. sell that, and they call mm-hmm. themselves a designer. And the issue I, I know you like, you know how I feel about that. And the issue I always have with that is I'm just like, yeah, but what's gonna make somebody that's not your mother or your brother or your friend from high school want to buy this? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's more than that. You're not a designer because you just put your name on something. You know what I mean? So well, that's I think that's that's the problem now, and I think. Um, as a designer and someone who like I'm not just the name of my brand like I I mean really I'm a one person army mm-hmm. I think it's funny because a lot of people think that like I have like a team of people um, which I mean I'm always looking for, <laughs> I'm always looking for more help like you know for me it's one of those things that's like I because I do everything this is like my little child yeah. like I protect it so much and I I'm like I it's kind of offensive when I hear people who I met this guy who like made t-shirts and he was like, granted, I think he was an actual artist because he said these were t-shirts based off of his paint. You're oh, an artist, okay. but you did not design that t-shirt. Right. You, it's a t-shirt. Yeah. So like, that's cool. And I think graphic designers are people who there's nothing wrong with a great t-shirt, mm-hmm. but to, de- to, to design an actual outfit is completely different. Different. And, and if you don't know how to actually make that outfit, I, I'm not going to lie. I have a little bit of lack of respect for the person who has sketches or ideas but doesn't know how to put how it to life. It. Everyone mm-hmm. has ideas. Right, right. But if you don't know how to take that and then bring it to life, I, I mean, obviously I want to get to a point where like I can kind of be, I always want to be hands on that. I always want to make my first sample. But um, I mean, I do a lot of production myself. So I would love to like not right. be at that place anymore, so, but I could never imagine not having my hands in everything that I'm making and, and having my stamp of approval. So on. out of curiosity, I'm wondering, and just, I just kind of wandered off thinking as mm-hmm. you mentioned that. Um, so what's your opinion then on songwriters who can't sing, singers who are not songwriters? Like, do you feel like it's the same thing in the sense of like, how are, how are you a songwriter that can't, Sing and express your own music through your own voice. Do you think that there's some, do you think that there's something wrong in the industry with even with designers? It's like there are some people that um, bring designers onto teams to do that exact mm-hmm. thing, just to sketch to and have the idea, and then they have other people that make it mm-hmm. or vice versa. Do you think what exactly is the root, I guess, of your lack of respect for that type of situation? I think being that. I think it's maybe it's the idea of calling yourself a designer versus uh, like okay, being okay. a brand or you're you have a line. You uh, have a line and that's that's fine. I you have see. a line. It's just the title. But calling yourself a designer is someone who does that lacks the mm-hmm. skills of actually designing it and like 
like obviously I, I mean I went to school for design I mean I know people who are self-taught mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to have formal training to be a fashion designer mm -hmm. um, but the amount of time that it takes me to think of what I want to make buy the fabric put it together make the pattern sew it all those things that go into it that people don't know how to do and that's okay that you don't know how to do mm. it but um but it's also not fair that you get the same title that i get <laughs> no absolutely. i think singers and songwriters are different in the way that i think it's a different talent and i think you can be great at both it's almost like i mean i don't i don't know if i want to say it's a d difference between see that's a tough one i'm trying to find a good analogy i was going to say being like a designer or a stylist but it's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't compare those two together. Because I feel like actually being able to sing is a different talent than being able to write a song. Right, Cause right, it is. You can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, or you don't, you may not have the vocals, but that, I mean, being able to put a whole song together is that's, like. It's amazing. Mind blowing. No, so and I only bring can, it up because. Or, or that's it, that's to me, it's like being, like being a dancer versus being a choreographer. Okay. Yeah. Although or or being a dancer. Most choreographers are dancers as well. Right. So that's a little I know a better kinda... comparison. It's like a dancer that can't freestyle. Right? So people will say, Well, you're not a real dancer if you can't freestyle. If mm -hmm. you can't just trust your body and let it go mm -hmm. and da -da -da, then you're not a real dancer. But that's not true. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just kinda of feel like you know what I mean? I feel like artists it comes in all different yeah. shapes and sizes mm -hmm. and forms and we all have our role and that's just kind of what it is. We don't have to say, Well, I respect you less because you can't do this mm -hmm. part of it and I respect you more because why? And everybody's different. You know what I mean? We all and, have and our so role. In that, in that way, I guess it's like... it's And so I guess maybe it's not right for me to like... No, but you justified it in saying... I, the issue that I have is people who call themselves a designer and can't do X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. So it's like... Going back to my dancer freestyle, it's like I'm not going to go around acting like, yeah, I'm a freestyler, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I guess I guess I agree with you maybe in the sense in the, of in the title, right? In the I mean, title. I don't want to get so technical, but I guess maybe be, especially being on a show and being around like so many other talented people who know, and maybe they their process is different. Everyone's process is different, mm -hmm. but ultimately they. Whether they sketched it or not, they when we all went to the same fabric store, we mm -hmm. all put it together, you know, by our hands, and then created this amazing look. And so it's like that; those are the people that I I love and respect mm -hmm. because that's the kind of talent that I bring to the table. Right. Um, right. So it's like if you, I have this idea and I like this skirt, but you got to bring it to somebody else to get it made because you don't even know how. Be different if it's like, hey, this is a really technical thing, and I want this person who is more skilled at this specific I see. thing to yeah. do that. Collaborating. I'm yeah. not, yeah. I don't really do denim. It's a very specific kind of design that, so there are designers who do denim and do it really well, but it's mm -hmm. not something that I don't, I don't really do and I don't necessarily want to take on that aspect of it. And so if I wanted to do jeans, I'd have these idea of jeans that I want to make and then collaborate or talk to a denim designer, somebody who can kind of maybe give me more okay, this, do this stitching or use this blah, blah, blah. This is the kind of wash. Like, that's I a see, whole I other see, technique. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's nothing wrong with not knowing how to do every aspect of it. But, like, if you don't know how to work a sewing machine, then, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. So... We did Project Runway once. We did it twice. We came runner-up mm -hmm. in the All-Star season. Mm -hmm. Then you go back home, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How did you figure out your next step? I actually figured out my next step before I decided to do All-Stars. Because I was like, I don't want to go back. And um, I was convinced that I should do it. Um, and I was like, <sighs> my uh, ex-boyfriend was like, you know, I think this is a really good opportunity for you. You'll mm -hmm. be able to be on TV again, and that's good exposure. Um, and so I was like, you know, that that's obviously a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and you get paid to do it. You don't get paid to do Project Runway. Oh, okay. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll go back. Um, but I went back with a different mindset because I felt like they will use you. How are you going to use this experience? And right. so before I went, I started my own website, 
figured out what my line was going to be, and that was something by Sanji. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I um, started blogging, just kind of like, just having, it's kind of lifestyle, like shots of like just me, street style shots. I remember those, um, yeah. And that was kind of just to get, get people's eyes on my website, mm-hmm. and have a product or anything to sell, but just kind of, people have always kind of responded well to my own personal style. Yeah. So it was just kind of a way to get people to go on the, go on the site. And so um, I had him posting up stuff even while I was on Project Runway, I took a lot of photos before I left just to kind of keep people's eyes on it. So when I was gone for like seven weeks, people weren't like losing interest. Like, where'd she go? Right. Exactly. Right, right, right. So then um, when I got back, um, um, I decided that I think I, it was over in, I'm trying to think, maybe like July or August. And I decided to put some pieces into production. And so. I think it was like November, maybe when I when it aired. The day that the show aired, I is a day I launched my collection. Oh, and that's so smart. I was like, okay, yep, watch you watching great. Yeah, also, yeah, bye yeah. from yeah, my yeah, website. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how I became a business. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was accidental, but it was. It wasn't like I just. I was like, okay, this is my line. You're starting a line. This is now your business. It was just like. Hey, it makes sense for me to to start selling clothes while yeah. I'm doing the website. Yeah, and it was strategic. I think that's what I want to use for it. Was it was very strategic. It uh-huh. definitely was. So I think I want to touch on that for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I think um something that I am a really strong advocate for is yeah, be strategic and and plan. <laughs> like things don't just happen. You have mm-hmm. to intentionally say, okay, what do I want to happen? First yeah, of all, yeah. declare that. How can I make that happen? And how mm-hmm. and leverage. Leverage will be another keyword. And so, like you said, you found out, okay, you know what? I'm going to go back on Project Runway All-Stars. But this time, I'm going to have a plan. I'm going to start developing my line. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have a website up. I'm going to have things in place so that when I'm on this show and I am getting this exposure, because mm-hmm. you see, there's a myth about exposure. People think, oh, you're going to be pro- you're gonna be broadcasting in front of millions of people. You're on the show with all these famous people and, des- and designers and top people in the industry. You made it once you've done that, mm-hmm. right? But it's like if you don't figure out the right way to leverage your exposure – then it all means nothing at the end it means, of the day. It means nothing because, like, if everyone's looking at your stuff saying your stuff's amazing, like, maybe they can't buy the stuff that they saw on the show, but at least you have something for people to look at and want to buy. Right. Otherwise, I mean, I mean, and this is no disrespect to the designers that I've done the show with that don't sell things, mm-hmm. but for me, it was like, that was just a no-brainer. Like, right. Especially after doing it the first time and not having anything to sell. And it's funny because the first time I did it... Um, I wore a lot of head wraps and it was like something I kind of started selling head wraps originally on Etsy after see, after the first time I did Project Runway just because people were like, oh my God, I love your head wraps. How do you wrap your hair like that? Mm-hmm. I was like, well, I'm not going to tell anybody how to wrap their hair. I'm going to sell them head wraps. So go. that way, there here you go. go. You like my head wraps? Buy this one. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but because, because, because I kind of, yeah, and I kind of saw the, the way that happened, I kind of wanted to be a little more proactive and okay. say, okay, well, now you can buy this. I mean, if I if I thought about it a little bit more, I would have maybe had things to, the things I was actually wearing had that to sell. Uh-huh. I mean, that would have that would have been probably the most perfect situation. But at least you know I had something for for people to sell. That's to, awesome. To so buy. you returned to the show. Mm-hmm. You put a plan in place. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some things that you learned mm-hmm. being on the show? What are some things that you wish you would have learned being on the show? Or even if you could think back now, like you wish you would have taken more advantage of maybe conversating with this person a little bit more or the mentors or asking certain questions. Like what would you say, like doing like a little before and after comparison, mm-hmm. like what are some things that you did learn from the show that really helped you with your career? Mm-hmm. But what are some things that you wish you would have learned, whether it be based on yourself taking more action, being more proactive, or just even that the show can offer um, that the designers that, you know, because at the end of the day, you got to go back into the real world after mm-hmm. that. What are some things you wish that um, you could have learned? But let's um, start with what are some things you did learn? What, what were things that you did take away? Um, probably the biggest thing, what I said before, was just kind of like, kind of eliminating the excuse of like, not feeling inspired and always mm-hmm. kind of making myself feel inspired or just kind of, it, it gave me a drive I never had before. Like, I'm so driven. I work so very hard. It's not something anybody could ever say. You can say whatever you want about me. Mm-hmm. I'm bad at texting. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not always on time, but I'm very driven and I'm ve- and I work very hard. And that's something that I, 
I can say, I don't know if it just like the whole experience itself, but it's something that for sure heightened once, once I did, um, especially Project Only All Stars mm -hmm. is something that, um, and I thought, I kind of think not winning did something for pushes me you too. a little bit more. Yeah. I felt like I had something more to prove, but I felt like I was, I was like, and I, and I think not winning surprisingly was a comfortable feeling that I had because I felt like, I mean, I gave every, like, no, I have nothing left. Yeah. Of me. I mean, in hindsight, I could have done a couple of designs a little differently maybe, mm -hmm. but I felt like I, I really did perform as best as I could. Mm -hmm. Um, and things I didn't learn, it's, it's a hard to say what I didn't learn because I still work for yeah. Project Runway All-Stars. Like, I work, um, this, this, um, summer that just passed was the third season that I came back to work on the show. Um, my job is to work with the challenge team. So I help them come up with the challenges for the designers nice. and I have a very unique position. No one has ever worked done the show and then worked on the show oh, okay. so it's something that's really cool for me to do and um and i felt like i feel like my opinions really respected there because they know that you know they they have they know what it's like they see what the designers go through but right. only i've only been the only one who've experienced it so i'm a, a huge advocate i see for the how did that come about how did you end up going back on the show kind of like as a um, producer it was like you know so weird i so when you do project runway it's very uh I don't know. They kind of don't. You don't really understand the makings of it. Okay. I mean, they kind of keep you very secluded, so you don't really understand it. They're a little more transparent on All Stars about that, and so you know, you know who the you know who the director is, you know who the producers uh, are, and you mm -hmm. kind of the challenge team speaks to you after the challenge after you after like you're told the challenge, they come in and they give you what's called the rules and regulations. So they say this is the they break down the actual challenge to you to make sure you really understand mm -hmm. what the challenge is, and so. I'm like, oh, wow. And that's when I first time I really understood that there was a team of people who come up with the challenges and execute them. And nice. I thought that was really cool. Oh, okay. And I also thought it was weird that there was nobody that, who really understands being a designer, that they're all producers. They're, not the, really, right. they're creative right. people, but yeah. they're not. And that's, you, mostly, that's you know? mostly the people that hold those positions. Yeah. Are the people that don't, don't even know anything about yeah, anything that about industry. That, exactly. And they're judging you. You know what I mean? So, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So I kind of... um. The first season, I came back as a, the challenge team consultant. So they okay. would ask me questions. And I also was um, the accessories coordinator. So they have um, accessory um, sponsors every year. So mm -hmm. my job was to kind of, uh, and I did used to do visual merchandising. So my job was to accessorize the walls and pick out accessories that I thought the designers would want to use every season to put up on the wall accessories. And I'd have like a good rapport with the sponsor and say, hey, as a designer, I know that they're not going to use these big chunky necklaces because it's uh, distracting to I the see, clothes. We I need see. more simple jewelry. We need more simple pumps or whatever the case may be. Um, and then kind of my role kind of grew a little bit more as I came back season to season. Nice. Um, yeah. So um, that's awesome because I think that it's important to, to know as an entrepreneur, as a creative mm -hmm. professional, as an artist, it's important to know that you have to have other skills. Mm -hmm. So it's like... Being a designer is not all there is to Sanji. You literally came on a TV show, a huge TV show, mm -hmm. and, and worked as a consultant, as mm -hmm. a producer. Mm -hmm. That's huge. You know what I mean? So I think my advice in that situation would be just really work to make sure that you have a wide skill set. Because although today you may not be needed as a designer, mm -hmm. you can be needed as a consultant or to give yeah. advice or to, you know what I mean, help come up with challenges. Like, it's great to be that versatile. Oh, well, I think, I mean? and also I think... If anyone having your own business and doing anything, you have to know how to do other things. Mm -hmm. um, I I think I take on the fashion designer hat. Um, that's something that I probably wear a little more proudly more than anything because it's something that I'm the most passionate about. Mm -hmm. But like having my own business, I'm like the sales rep. I'm the, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm the yeah. one. I am the, my social social media director. Yeah. I am my website. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I do, I do everything. Yeah. I'm the shipping manager. You know what I mean? So <laughs> no, I like, can relate. These are things that you have to kind of, you have to learn how to like, you don't have to be great at everything, but if you, until you get to a place where you can hire somebody to do these things, you have to know how to do everything. Right. You have to know how to put the pieces together and learn from other people. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I like watching, seeing what other people do and then kind of like 
in asking for help, we're saying, hey, I see that you do this really well. Yeah. Can you kind of like help yeah. me figure out how to do and, this? And um, just to spin off of that, I think, yeah, you got to do your research because for anything that you want to do, there's somebody out there that does it and that's succeeding at it and, and it's putting it in your face. So I think it's important to do your research. You got to learn what works for them. So whether that be, like I said, doing your research, Googling, getting on Instagram and just kind of searching around and through the hashtags. It's also good to hit up people directly. If there's people you want to learn from, reach out to them. You'd be surprised by the amount of people that will actually take you up on an offer to sit down and just have a conversation. And I think you that, know what I mean? I think I'm in a place now where I realize so much that, also it's like, it's so crazy that I think, when I think about like my like quote unquote tribe and the people that I surround myself with, you, when you're focused and you're, you're kind of really concerned on, on what it is that you're passionate about, you slowly but surely weed out the people that are bringing the BS mm -hmm. in your life and you surround yourself more with like minds. And mm -hmm. so I think, you know, I'm able to do more projects and, and things with, you know, uh, Issa Rae said something that was really cool and she was, um, and it was, she had an interview and it was like, I think people off, oftentimes want to, like, if it was up to me, I'd, I'd, I'd sit down with, like, I don't know, maybe John Galliano or, like, a really huge designer mm -hmm. who I'm, like, very inspired by um, or use the best of the best um, of people to... But sometimes it's, like, using the people in your circle. Yeah. On your level. Yeah. Because those are the people that are trying to grind. Those are the people Absolutely. that want it just as much as you are. And mm -hmm. you maybe you don't have you don't have the money right now to right. pay that person. Yeah, my sister. And they don't have the money to pay you. Yeah. So build a passion project that everybody can be a part of, that they can be proud of, you can be proud of, and everybody can benefit from. And nobody's necessarily getting paid, maybe. Yeah. You're not at that place, maybe. My sister and I actually just recently had this conversation because, you know, when I really put it in perspective, I'm running three brands, right? Mm -hmm. I'm running me, whereas I, I'm still I still work as talent sometimes in front of the camera. I have David George and Company, which is more of my creative agency entertainment platform, and then I have the Creators Club, which is my uh, business resource to kind of give back to people that are up and coming and and are out there in the community right now. And I was like, damn, like I really need to build a team because I just can't handle all this. Mm -hmm. I'm running social media for every one of these people. I mean, every one of these platforms, I'm putting together productions for every one of these platforms, and it's a lot to keep up with. And I was like, but it's hard because I can't dish out hundreds of dollars yeah. and pay people to do all these things. And she had a good point, and she said, well, you got to find people that are just as hungry as you. People that, like you said, people that are just as hungry and just as eager to, 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 to be a part of something that they believe in, that they want to grow with. Those are going to be the ones that are going to show up, even though it may be only for 50 bucks. But they understand that that's really all that you can offer, yeah. but they believe in the vision and the brand. So... Yeah, and I, th I saw that interview as well. I actually posted it not too long ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she emphasized on networking across yeah. versus networking up. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because it's like at the end of the day, like we're all trying to get it. And the best way to get it is to work together to yeah. do it. You know what I mean? And so. I think sometimes it's like it is, it is a matter of I think when you bring something great to the table and you, and you kind of, yeah, meet people who are who everybody's bringing something great to the table, yeah. then people are willing to kind of sacrifice Maybe it is. And that just means right now. We're not saying, like, spend your whole career networking across and not making yeah, a dime. Yeah. I just mean, like, you know. No, I mean, you should, all, you should always be trying to network, network with anyone and mm -hmm. trying to find different outlets to network with people. And, you know, as, a, as, a, as you know, I'm a self-employed designer, you know, who has my own brand, who works from home, like, I don't really, I have to force myself to go out mm -hmm. so that I can meet people and say, yeah. hey, this is what I do and... Because, you know, it's like, otherwise, I'm just in the house all day, and who am I going to meet inside right, my Right, in your house, you know? right? So, how's your brain going to grow? And, exactly. But now, do you think, is that a matter of time, or is that a matter of you're just intimidated by going out and networking? What is that? Oh, it's definitely time. I mean, I think, well, it's like, okay, and I'm learning to be better at trying to find a balance, mm -hmm. because I used to feel so, it's like, especially when I lived in New York, like... I think living out here in LA has definitely kind of been good for me in the way that I I kind of want to live life more uh, now. Yeah. Where it's like, I used to feel so just like, almost like I didn't deserve to like... Oh, like celebrate. Have downtime. Uh -huh, and like, uh -huh. No, like you always have it's to... like, what am I celebrating? Oh yeah, you haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. you, I was so hard on myself and now I'm like, 
Girl, you worked a lot. Yeah. You, you shipped off this order. Go you out. did this. Yeah. You shipped a couple you shopping. Made a sale. No, you did all this stuff. Like, it's okay to like, and then, and then realizing that's how sometimes you meet people. The other day, um, Mo was like, let's just go. It's ha- happy hour. Let's go have happy hour drinks. And we went to this bar that, um, you know, it's not too far away from my apartment. Talking to the bartender, really cool guy. And he's like, um, he's telling me about how, um, you know, he recently moved to LA and, um, I was telling him, he was like, oh, what do you guys do? I told him I was a fashion designer, and he was telling me how um, he has um, a few friends that that are buyers for opening ceremony. And he's like, I, I love your stuff. I'd love to like just put your stuff out there and see what happens. Mm-hmm. This could be the best experience of my life, or right. maybe nothing could come of it. But had I not just go, gone to this bar that was like down the street right. and been open, that's the thing, too. You have to be open to conversation. Mm-hmm. Like I think sometimes you don't, I mean... Sometimes small talk is like the most annoying thing. Like, <laughs> I mean, I I will co- I will one hundred percent be the first person to be like. Sometimes I'm not in the mood, right. but just having you know a friendly small talk conversation with this bartender could potentially be a game changer for me. Yeah. So yeah, and it's been. Be, I think be willing it's... to have those and and then and, and or, or 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 kind of having that idea that you're too good to talk to people or you don't or you don't necessarily fit like. Be open mm-hmm. to those conversations because yeah, no, you, you never know to. where they're going to lead. You literally have to. And um, I think the lesson here is that you really have to realize that 99.9% of your opportunities are going to come through your network. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's like you have to know people. You have to expose yourself to different people because those are the people that are going to be like, oh, I have this project coming up. Uh-huh. I know a designer. I know a director, mm-hmm. I know a choreographer, I know a dancer. Like, you have to make sure your network is as big as possible. I know people that their network is this big, and because of that, they don't work enough. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it's really impossible to sustain, especially if you're still, free, if you're still freelance, and it's impossible to sustain as an artist if mm-hmm. you don't have a big enough network, yeah. if you don't have people thinking about you when things come up. Exactly. So. And, that's, and, it's a, and it's a lot of times it's... It is about your talent, but a lot of times it's really just about... Who you know. Well... No, but like in those type of situations, I feel like it's how that person perceives you. Yes, yes. People will get work n- mm-hmm. because they're just, they're good with people. Yeah. And because people like them and, yeah. you know, they're not an asshole. And yeah. where you could be really talented, but yeah. if you're an asshole and people don't like you yeah, because people you're mean or rude, people. they're not going to like hire you. Yeah. Because think about it. It's like if you hire some asshole just because they have great mm-hmm. uh, work. Right, you gotta think about how much that affects your team yeah. and the people that you're putting them in front of. You know what I mean? And just even your brand. It's like why bring somebody into an environment that's gonna just kind of ruin the environment. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like energy is so contagious and it's, it's really important, I think especially it's as a creative person. Like it, ha- the vibe has to be right. Um, but back to networking, it's it's proven that the average person would rather sit on at home and scroll through their phone and call that networking. You know scrolling on Instagram and liking and following a few different people versus actually get up and go out into the real world and, and talk to people and get uncomfortable a little bit. So I think that I thought that was interesting when I read that not too long ago. So guys, get up, get out get there, get out moving. The There's house. so many events out there that yeah. are for that purpose. So get on LinkedIn, whatever you got to do, find them and get out there.